my name's John, welcome to part one in what's going to be a series of videos all about welding aluminium using a spool gun. Before we get started I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. The first thing is I'm not a welder, I'm a motor mechanic. Saying that I did work in motorsport for quite a few years and I have done a lot of welding. I've got a YouTube channel, my channel is called Double Boost. On my video channel I do a lot of machining, I do welding, I do fabricating and I do some car repairs. To power this spool gun I'm going to use an Artec iMig 180. I've actually done a review on the 180 MIG before. I did MIG welding with it, stick welding and some scratch dot TIG. I found it to be a nice little unit ideal for a small workshop like mine. I'll do the video the same way as I've done all the Artec videos. I'll open the box with a camera, well I'll open the box with a knife, but I'll video the box being opened, show you exactly what's in there, then we can go through a little bit of safety, some setups. Right, this is obviously the box that the welder comes in. It's got decent carry handles on it, which is an improvement from the, the previous boxes. Actually, actual welder itself and in this box will be the torch, the regulator, the earth lead. What I'll do, I'll use my earth lead, my regulator, so all these parts in the box remain unused because this unit will be going back to Artec when I'm finished with it. And so first thing you find is an instruction manual. And the first page is quite an important bit. There's a part there you fill in for your guarantee. Seal number date to purchase where you purchased it, obviously from Artec. Fill that in. Instruction manual is in English, just English, which is quite handy. And I'll look inside the box. Like I say, all this, none of this is going to get used, it's all going back to Artec. I've got a gas pipe, be a regulator in there. Decent earth lead, nice quality copper cable with a standard DIN fitting, standard type MB15 MIG torch. All I'm interested in really is using the inverter itself to power the spool gun so all this will be left unmolested. Right, this is the actual welder itself. First thing obviously you do is have a good look at it, make sure there's no big nasty dents or any damage to the paintwork, if it doesn't appear to be. It's the same as the one eight I did the last time, apart from it's got the spool gun on off switch there. And it's got a plug there for the control cable on the spool gun. So you've got an earth goes into there. That's alive, you could use that for your if you're stick welding. That's obviously your, your standard Euro fitting for your MIG torch. Your spool gun plugs into there and into there. Normal controls, voltage, wire speed. This one here has amps, MME amps, that's for your stick welding. There's various lights on the top, warning lights. It's got a readout on here. The readout only works when it's actually welding. You can tell what amps you're using. We'll have a look inside. It's a standard wire feed set up. I say I won't be going to use this, I have already done videos showing how it works. There's a terminal in there you can change from positive to negative, that's if you're using flux cord wire. Come to the back of the set, you've got a gas inlet, on off switch, quite a decent length of nice heavy duty power cable. 
The welder doesn't come with a plug on, none of the welder has to come with plugs on. You can run this welder off a 30 amp supply and you'll get maybe 150, 160 amps out of it. Then you need to go on to a 16 amp supply to get the full 180 amps. What I'll do, I'll put a big plug on here so I can plug it into my heavy supply. But for all of the welding except the last little bit when we have it running flat out so to speak. I'll use this adapter that goes from the big commando type plug down to a standard 13 amp plug with a standard 13 amp fuse in it. This is the spool gun or type of centers with this 180 amp MIG welder. It's called a spool gun because it's a gun that holds a spool of wire. So instead of the wire being inside the machine, the wire is actually on the gun that you hold the well with, which means you've only got a very short distance for the wire to travel. Your rollers are there and your tips are six inches as opposed to a two or a three or a four meter normal MIG torch. These are the connectors that go into the welder. We'll do this bit first. This is a standard Euro type adapter. That's normally where the wire would feed up there. That's your gas port, it's got the two little O-rings on it. And these are your two connectors. Your trigger works, you pull your trigger and it turns the rollers on and off. There's a seven pin adapter here. That's what supplies power to the rollers inside the gun. The hook up onto the welders, simple. Exactly the same as a Euro torch. That pushes in, check nut pulls it in tight. This only goes on one way, like that. That's basically your torch hooked up to the welder. Next thing is, you'll put your earth lead in there. I've put a plug on the welder. I'm just going to plug it into my 13 amp adapter. And that'll run off, off standard mains. So all the welding I do, except for the last little bit, I just have a standard 13 amp plug. Controls on the front of the welder. There's a switch there that switches from MIG to stick weld, and that's the amperage for your stick welding. So we want that on MIG. We're using a spool gun, so it's quite simple spool gun on, spool gun off, spool gun on. You've got a voltage and a wire speed. You vary the voltage and the wire speed, that's what controls your welding amperage. Obviously the more voltage, the more wire, the thicker the material you can weld. These controls work exactly the same with a spool gun as they do with an ordinary MIG torch, voltage and wire feed. That is, a knob on the gun, that controls your wire feed if you're using a multi-process welder. On these welders, you've still got to use the wire speed pot on the front of the welder. Next thing you need is a gas supply. You must use pure organ. There's no getting away from it. You've got to use pure organ to weld aluminium. Gas supply simply screws onto there. This is connected onto a big, my big bottle of pure organ, through a regulator and through a flow meter. So we've got power, we've got gas, we'll have an earth lead, and now we're starting to put some wire on the spool gun. I've gently gripped the spool gun in the vise just so I'm not fighting it running around the bench. There's a little release button there, that opens the cover, and inside basically you've got a small big welder. That's where the spool of wire goes. Feeds down through here, you've got a roller and an idler wheel, you've got a short liner. Wire comes along here and you've got a tip in the end exactly the same as a MIG torch. So all you're doing is pushing wire from there to there as opposed to a 2 or a 3 or a 4 meter standard MIG torch. There's a little wheel there that adjusts how much pressure or how much tension is on the wire. Push that in it releases the roller so you can get the wire in. I've got a roller, 0.8 aluminium wire, we'll put that in first. 
that's left hand thread, the little nut on the end of there. It's got a piece of rubber on there, which acts as a friction device to stop the wire from overrunning. Aluminium wire is not quite as bad as steel wire. It doesn't automatically all bunch up and try and escape, but you've still got to keep control of it. We'll cut the end of the wire off so we've got a nice clean end. And that simply feeds through the guide in between the two rollers and goes up the wire guide like that. And there it is out the end. Simple as that. Right, we've got the wire loaded into the spool gun. I'm going to power the welder up. I pull the trigger, the wire feed on there is set to zero, so obviously there's no wire coming out. As you move it up, the speed increases. Nice, smooth wire delivery. I like that. And as I've said on the Multi-process machines, there is a little control here which would do the same job as the wire speed pot on the machine. I've set up the tension roller in about the midway position. If I pull the trigger, you can see all the aluminium wire is making a nice curl on the bottom. That's pretty good, I'll leave it at that and then try it once I start welding. I can't stop the wire coming out. And obviously we've only got a very, very short push there, so the chances of the wire bunching up, or birds nesting as they call it, is very remote. I hope this video has helped a little bit in showing you how to set up the machine, how to set up the spool gun. In the next probably couple of videos, I'll be doing some welding. I'll try and get a lot of arc shots, that's shots with the camera looking through a welding glass so you can actually watch the welding process. Uh, we'll do different thicknesses of metal, start off actually with a pointy wire on some thin stuff and work the way up and then put the one mil wire in all the way up, put the machine onto a big supply and see exactly what it can do.